it's really lovely to see you as Reverend Deborah um, back in the vicarage at Priest. Uh, we've just had our Sunday morning service live streamed from here so that's why my little table is all set up as an altar for that service. Uh, we're back in lockdown again so things are a bit different and a bit challenging but it's really nice to be able to be with you and I thought I would share with you what we've been thinking about in church um, on the live stream service this morning. Let me just tell you what I've got on my altar. I've still got my crib um, because we're still in the season of Epiphany. So we're still remembering in church the birth of Jesus. We remember the birth of Jesus right into February. So as, as Christians and as the church, we celebrate Christmas for a really long time. So I've got my little candle in front of the crib, remembering the birth of Jesus, the light shining in the darkness, the light that never leaves us, the light of Christ. So I've got my two candles at the front, which are my altar candles. And so as I place the Bible on the table, we remember God the Father. and We say together, Father, we are here. We are here for you. And we place the cross and we remember Jesus, God's Son. And we say, Jesus, we are here. We are here for you. And as we light the candle... We remember God, the Holy Spirit, and we just get that there. Okay. And we pray, Holy Spirit, we are here. We are here for you. So today in church we have been celebrating Plow Sunday. Because we live in a rural place we have actually remembered the soil and the plough and all the equipment used in farming but it may be that you're not really a farmer maybe you do something different I know you do because you're all pupils at school and so at the beginning of the year on Plough Sunday we dedicate we bring ourselves and our work to God so when we think about Plowing, you might think about reading, you might think about writing, you might think about doing some sums. The teachers will probably think about teaching, they'll think about books, they'll think about paper, they'll think about marking, they'll think about all the admin that they have to do for school, especially at the moment. But it might also be that. Um, You've got people in your family that do other things and they don't farm either, but maybe they're nurses and they've got patients. Maybe they work from home and they use a laptop a lot. So we're thinking about the tools, things that we use to do our day-to-day -day work, to do the tasks that God has given us. And at the start of the year, we invite God to bless the work of our hands, to bless the equipment we use and to be with us in our everyday work. And the Bible reading we've had um, today, which I'm going to read to you, it comes from the Gospel of Luke. And so it says, As Jesus was walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. I'm going to read that last verse again. No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. I wonder what Jesus was saying to people when he said that phrase. I want you to imagine, if you can, 
ploughing at the time of Jesus. They might have had oxen, they might have used a donkey, but the animal would have pulled the plough. Now it's done by tractor, isn't it? But the animal would have pulled the plough, or maybe it was just something that they were using, a little piece of equipment, a bit of a wooden plough that they pushed without an animal. I want you to imagine that. I want you to imagine the donkey and the plough behind. And imagine you're steering the plough and guiding the donkey with the rain. Now, what would happen, if you imagine that, if you were to turn around, what would happen? You wouldn't be able to do what? That's right. Think about this. You wouldn't be able to go in a straight line. You wouldn't be able to plough a straight furrow. And so Jesus said it's a bit like that with anything we do in our lives. But we have to keep looking forward. We have to look ahead. We can't keep looking back or turning round. And it's the same for us as his disciples. We have to keep looking forward. I wonder if there's a time, been a time in your life, I wonder if now you struggle to think about the future, if you struggle to think about what's ahead of you, I wonder if you're always thinking about what has happened, thinking about the past. I wonder what you could do to help yourself or to help each other to keep thinking about the future and thinking what lies ahead. Jesus encourages us to keep our eye on what lies ahead, to keep focused on the future. Perhaps it's a bit like that for you with your schoolwork. Perhaps there's something that you really struggle with. I used to struggle with maths. I'm still not very good at it, to be honest. And I used to try really hard and not think about the mistakes I'd made the day before, but think about how I could be better and how I could improve. And sometimes we find that if we work hard, we can be good enough and we start to enjoy the very thing that became really difficult for us at one point. So we've got special prayers that we said in church today about asking God to bless the soil and God to bless the plough. So let's say those prayers now. May this soil represent all the land, all the field, all the soil, all this community. May God bless this soil, make it fruitful, bring a sustainable harvest. May God bless those who till the soil, giving them wisdom to care for its health. May we all honour the land by our stewardship of the creation. God bless the soil. God bless the soil. May this plough represent all the equipment and machinery used in farming this land. May God bless the plough as it cuts through the compacted earth, breaking through roots and weeds, feeding and conditioning the soil. Bless us in our choice of what to plough and what to leave unploughed. May we all honour the land by our stewardship of the creation. God speed the plough. God speed the plough. I wonder if you might want to write your own prayers, whereas they're not about a soil and it's not about a plough. I wonder, do you want to write a prayer about school? I wonder what the soil represents in your school life. And I wonder what the plough represents. Maybe you want to pray that God would bless the pencils and the paper. Maybe there are other things that you use in school. Maybe you're doing some school from home. Maybe you're doing, using a tablet or a laptop. Maybe you want to write a prayer asking God to bless that rather than bless the plough. So I'll leave that to you. I know some of you will do that. It'll be lovely to see your prayers when you've written. So let's just say a quick prayer together now as we come to the end of our time. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will be with us in these difficult days for those who are watching this in school, we pray that they will know your love and blessing. For those who are watching at home, we pray that they will also know your love and blessing. Keep us safe 
and help us to be determined to not look back and to keep looking forward in all we do. And may we know your blessing, the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit with us and upon us today and always. Amen. So have a really good week. Uh, Mrs Hodges and I and some of the other members of the team will be back with you over the coming weeks for collective worship and we're really looking forward to it. I'm going to say a special hello to some of the pupils at preschool who are um, in school at the moment because you will have seen me and my little puppy and he's asleep at the moment but hopefully next time I do uh, collective worship I'll put him on the screen for you so that you can see him. You know, some of you have been very brave and said hello to him because he's quite jumpy isn't he? He doesn't like licking and biting but thank you for that. He's getting used to children um, and he gets very excited in our garden when he can hear you playing um, in school. Um, and his name is Rudolph. And so when he could hear you before Christmas, there was one day when before Christmas you were in the playground singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And he went absolutely bananas with excitement because you were singing his name. So that was very funny. So thank you for that. You gave us a lot of smiles. Have a good week and I will see you soon. Bye bye.